Jessica Headings, welcome to the Venue RX podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Well, I'm super excited to chat with you as well and learn about your venue and all of the things. Um, I'm just curious, have you listened to the podcast, heard the podcast before? Kind of what was your introduction to the podcast? I have. I stumbled upon you when I was searching business wedding venue podcast on Spotify and I stumbled upon yours. And then I found your Instagram page and I started following both at the same time. And you became my my voice in my head when I was on the trike lot every morning. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I um I that's exciting to hear because I think, and we were just talking about this before we got on, but our industry is such a cool industry. We're this massive multi-billion dollar asset heavy operations heavy industry but there's no real like one place that people go to for education like there's some some things and i mean the educators that have come before have done amazing and people are, who are out there still creating content like that's amazing but we need i think we need more right i would totally agree uh, again i'm uh, from a valley business so tons of experience in the business world but when you're trying to change and innovate within that business, it's hard to find voices that um, are innovating with you sometimes. So it's fun listening to your podcast where I hear people um, finding that same way to, I don't know, learn and grow with the same kind of people. But does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it totally does. And Jessica, you're part of that process now, right? Um, and, and so I'm excited to hear about your venue, Island View Waterfront. Could you, before we get into that though, could you kind of rewind the tape a little bit and and um, give me a bit of your backstory, how you got into the wedding and events industry. Sure, so uh, my family has, it owns Idleby Waterfront. Um, we've actually owned it this year, 55 years we've been in business. Um, so my grandparents bought it in 1968 and opened their bar and marina in 1969 on New Year's Day. And then my parents took over in the late 80s, well, actually early 80s, I'm gonna date myself if I say late 80s. Um, so they took over in the 80s and then my brother and I operated the restaurant from early 2000 up until about 2018. So I've been in the restaurant industry my whole life. Um, after COVID hit, we, we're going to sell it. We had an offer on it and we were going to get rid of it. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, dad, let's just hold on and try something different. I have got married there. We've held tons of weddings and events there, but it was always in conjunction with the restaurant. So there was a wedding down front on the water front and then there was full service restaurant happening at the same time. So it was crazy, but I said, let's try it. So in 2000, in 21, we closed the restaurant October 31st. I booked my first wedding November 1st for 2022. And then I booked 10 in a month <laughs> going into 2022. And then I ended up doing 15 weddings in 2022, um, just by sheer luck, I guess. I don't know, maybe, who knows, the experience in the industry, people knew our name because we've been around for so long. And then um, this year's doubled already what we did last year and then we're already booking into 25 which is pretty exciting <laughs> wow wow okay there's so much there to unpack i can't wait to to like hear okay so take me to you said october 31st was your final day of of business restaurant business and then you said the next day you basically had your first wedding booked for the next year yeah, so if my parents watch this, um, which they will, uh, what happened was I said, Dad, well, we, let's give this a shot. And he said, you can try it if you want. I'm going to go camping for a couple months and I'll be back because it was winter season at that point because we were usually at May to September um, restaurant because we're on the water. And so I just started advertising. I started my own Instagram account. I started everything outside of the cafe and did my own. It was I Love You Waterfront events. And I started posting the heck out of it say we're weddings only and i got a i started like calendly i did a tour schedule i was just making things up <laughs> i had no idea what i was doing so i just put a tour schedule up and people started booking tours so we literally closed my dad left and the next day i had a tour and they're like we've been watching your instagram and we want to book that is so cool. Well, first, yeah, huge congratulations, because I'm sure that took, there's some nerves there. It was like, oh my gosh, like just switching, this is a new model, this is a new thing. Could you, 
help me understand a little bit about like your your thought process. Was it like we have nothing to lose to try this new thing? Was it how, how did you kind of get there to like completely? Because restaurants to event venue is not a crazy jump, but I mean it's still a huge jump. Um, so I think it was always on my heart to do. So running a family business. I worked with my dad, I worked with my grandmother, I worked with my brother, my mom's always there. So we all had different ideas of what we wanted the property to look like. So my husband and I got married there in December of 2010. I was like, wow, oh, we should do weddings. And it kind of just floated away. And then a friend came and they had their wedding there. And I was like, why are we not doing this? So it really just was me saying, this is all my heart to do. Then the, the restaurant industry is changing so much after COVID, I think fast casual is going to start to go away. Personally, you know, drive throughs are the norm now. Um, people like to order online and that wasn't our business model. We were a family cafe where people were sitting down to eat and wanted to have conversations with us. And we had lost that because nobody wanted to come out anymore. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just said, I don't have anything to lose. I mean, we are had it on the market. What if I just tried, if it doesn't work, we'd go back to the cafe model because we know how to do that. And really it was just, research i went website after website at different wedding models and uh venues that i liked and i took bits and pieces of everything and just kind of made it my own so you have experience you've like this deep well of experience in business and family business but you're also kind of a new business owner because you are you know in this new zone right Exactly. Could you t help me understand what things you've been able to cross over and kind of bring with you that have really helped smooth your journey um, initially? And then maybe some things that surprised you or were like a steep learning curve that you had to get into because you're in a new industry. Um, I think, I think the easiest thing to start off with was pricing. I understood how to do cost analysis and operating expenses and cam, like all that stuff. We had to do that in the restaurant industry, you know, a bottle of beer costs a dollar thirty four, thirty seven to be you know, you know, so I think the to take all of my operating expenses because we had that experience already, I knew what they were. They were pretty straightforward. So that wasn't a new business part of it. Um, so that was easy. We have a liquor license, so they have to order alcohol from us, but we I just took my bar packages from my regular catering and amped it up to a four hour package versus, you know, a two hour social event. Um, so those are really easy for me to do. The hardest was taking the cafe and separating myself and going to a venue space. People knew us for 50 years as a waterfront restaurant. They could come down and get a pot roast and a cold beer but they didn't know this was a venue space. And I had to, I'm having to change that outlook, you know, in the community. So right now my market isn't even coming from the 10 miles that we used to market. My work is coming from, I mean, I'm going all the way down. We're close, we're 20 minutes from Baltimore an hour from DC. So I'm getting that Baltimore South traffic. And then a lot of our clientele are coming from out of state. I've had Georgia and client coming from California because they're gambling bits of Maryland. So we're getting that, new market space that we I've never contended with before because everybody was just in, you know, our radius is probably about 20 miles tops. Wow. So you're, as you are reintroducing yourself to the local market, you're not getting, cause they're not used to referring people to your business as a wedding venue. They're used to referring it as a cafe or as a restaurant. Ah, that makes sense. Has, has that been challenging? Like, I guess what things have you done or have you done anything to try to retool that, that mindset in the local community? Um, so we were, so this, the so last year we didn't open the cafe at all. Um, so that was a huge ship that not to even have it open well, after 50, four years now to open it all was a major, uh, a greedy process. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, is the best way to describe it. And then this year we tried to do some cafe days. So we would pop up and do events in between the times that we didn't have weddings just to get that additional traffic through from the neighborhood. So they got to see the pictures of the weddings. So I took one of the walls and it's just from past weddings to the past year and a half. So they get to see all of the, the stuff that we've been doing when we've been closed. And then that's generated that new traffic that we weren't touching. Do you... How important has like Chamber of Commerce, 
um, kind of local things like that? Has that played a, a role at all into your your business as it's growing and changing? Um, not yet. I, my hopes are to get reactive uh, in that community space. We had fell out of it because again, the uh, restaurant space is different than the menu space, and um, I just haven't touched it yet. That's it's on the it's on the to do list. <laughs> yeah. So you you mentioned Calendly as a tool to kind of get started. What are some other tools that that you use that have you found success with? Well, I built my website on GoDaddy, so a free website space was really key when I was learning how to build that out by myself. Um, and it's still a great tool because it's helping me. Uh, I learned all the stuff on that and I can do it myself. Um, Instagram, social media marketing, like any of the, those, uh, were, it's all I, from a marketing purposes. Canva has been amazing for ad work. Um, those are the, probably the big three tools that I use daily. <laughs> You, you said uh, operate more. You said Canva for ads. Are you doing? Are you putting together um, mm -hmm. pictures and and doing like ads on Instagram, Facebook? Okay, so menu work. All of my menus I make in Canva to send out to clients. Any uh, brochures. All of that goes through Canva. And then I use Bitly to create a short link. And then that way, it's just nice and clean every time I send out information. Okay. Okay, makes sense. And the Bitly for any of the people who are not not tech savvy, and I can tell you're you're quickly absorbing all these things. What is Bitly? Uh, so Bitly is a way to short links. So if I wanted to share my tour calendar or wanted to share a bar menu pamphlet, instead of having a long code that says Canva, blah, 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 it says Bitly backslash or forward slash bar menu, I will do, or tour schedule. So it just shortens everything. So clients have seen this long, long message. Got it, very cool, very cool. Yeah, Bitly, I think there's another one called uh, Tiny URL, maybe? Right, uh, I think it's the same thing, or pretty close, they're like competitors. Yep, yep, and that definitely does make a big difference when you're on Instagram or anywhere else where it's like, could be this massive URL. Right. Right. Talk, share a little bit about how, because you went from, I heard you say, you know, you had catering options for the bar packages and you maybe had some of those pieces in there. Are you doing catering in-house off of the, the food side of things that the restaurant used to have? Or what's your model and style of operating your venue? Great question. So when the restaurant, the cafe closed, we didn't have any staff. So... I had to figure out how to do catering because I knew that I couldn't do catering and bar and staff and do everything. So the first year I allowed clients to bring in their own catering so they could choose whoever they wanted as long as they were licensed and insured. And then they would have to come down and do a walkthrough and make sure that they knew where, you know, what the space looked like. I have since changed that this year. Um, we are now partnered with a local catering company um, so they are our in-house caterer that does drop off and then I'll reheat or you know, bring back to temperature and then I supply the service staff so I don't have to cook or clients can choose their own caterer for an additional outside catering thing. Mm -hmm. Got it. So it gives them the option to go with someone else if they want to bring something in specific or go with your kind of in-house team that you're familiar with. Exactly. So do you see that changing any time in the future? I know you said you first did catering, you know, they could bring in anyone outside and then now you have it where it's a little bit more augmented. Do you think you'd ever go full like in-house, uh, either catering list or like doing catering yourself? The bar and catering are in-house, kind of, pseudo. And then uh, we include tables and chairs in a rental that I pretty much set up and break down if I have a crew that day. They'll help me set up and break down. But otherwise, they can choose from our vendor list. It's not a preferred list. It's a list that of people I've worked with and I love. So we have caterers down to dog sitters and everything in between. Okay. Dog sitters. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Are, are there, and I was going to ask you about this. I'm curious if there's any correlation here. Are there things that are very specific that you have to think about being on the water that maybe you wouldn't have to think about if your venue was not on the water? Um, so I think about kids a lot because we have peers. Um, so we have 
uh, I have wordage verbiage in my contract that says that they have to stay with their parents. And if I have to take them off the pier, that's like morning and then, and then that kind of thing. Like I keep them with their parents or they have to hire a babysitter. Uh, if they're going to have kids. So I have babysitters on the list as well. Um, fireworks. People like to do fireworks on the water. Um, so there's, we're on the Chesapeake. Um, this is the only one specifically I can think of. We're in a neighborhood. So we worry about music, but we got our entertainment license and um, like noise control licensing or something. Um so people just have to stop the music at 10, even though it can go to 11. But those are really the only things I can think of off the top of my head that, oh, no, weather too often on the bay. <laughs> oh, so we require guests over 65 to have a tent. Um, so we've had our biggest wedding was 150 and we had a huge tent and there was worries of a storm coming often okay jessica so we talked about catering we talked about bar a little bit um give me a rundown of what else you include in uh people's booking packages do you do coordination uh rentals tables and chairs things like that walk me through some of that right so we include tables and chairs in our our rental um which our staff mostly me and my kids set that up and break that down um we do not offer coordination yet, but I kind of turn it into the coordinator because I'm hands on with any of the clients that come. I want to make sure that they have a good experience. Um, so during the process of their their rental, I help them with timeline pieces and floor plans and stuff. So pretty casual, but I'm there to help if they don't have a day of coordinator that they bring in with them. Um, Anything that is in the building, they can use. If there's a bin they want to use or a picture or candles, they can use anything that we have. I think eventually I'll probably have a um, a package where they it's included, if that makes sense, like actually display the pieces that they can use, but I don't have that at this time. Okay, awesome. Yeah, do you require coordination uh, or do you not have to have a coordinator? I don't require it, but I recommend it when we do the tour. Once they book, I generally recommend that, and I send that over in our vendor list. Uh, when I send a resource guide over, it's a whole list of what you might want to have to help you have a stress-free wedding. Mm, that, I love that because you are basically educating or help educating your clients around like what they're going to need. And people don't know, you know, like they're just like, yay, we're getting married. Let's plan this. But they don't know everything that goes into it. You know, one of the things that I loved about your website was you had this like investment tab that you were just really, you know, you you talked about the investment, you talked about how much it would cost. Do you find that that's something that's helped you get uh, better clients or clients that, you know, are not concerned as much about price when you're talking to them in person? Yeah, I definitely think that helps a lot. They can see the price right off the bat. It's very transparent. And they know what they're getting as soon as they walk in the door. So when we first started, I think I was probably at a lower price point. Um, and for lack of better words, the clientele was that. They didn't have any coordination. They, they had more DIY than not. Um, and it really made for a stressful day. And I found that I didn't really want to have that kind of stress and it was even my wedding. So I didn't want them to feel the same stress that I was feeling. And I don't even know if they felt, no, they were feeling it. <laughs> no. What are some of the other things that you've done to kind of uh, ease the planning process or maybe even the booking process for couples at your venue? Um, so just right off the bat with the booking process, um, when they tour with us, well, first they book the tour and I send up to two emails, not inundating them with lots of verbiage, but send them an email to say thank you. And then a follow-up email. So what they can expect when they arrive, walk in the building, I'll be there to greet you. We're going to, you know, just the steps of that. So that they're not, most people have never planned a wedding. So they don't even know what a tour of a venue looks like. They, they've never done it. So uh, that is first step. I want to make them comfortable in knowing that I'm going to be there to meet them, who I am, our family history. Um, and then after the tour process, I send them an email with the booking process. I thank them. This is what booking looks like with us. And this is what you get when you book a wedding at Island View. And then 
of course, follow up emails just to have them get to know me without a huge sales pitch. This is what you'll get with us. You don't have to buy. I'm always here to help. And hopefully if they don't book a wedding with me, they're going to come back for a party or a baby shower or something on the other side because I made them feel comfortable in the process because I might not have been a good fit for them for some reason. Mm. But if you're not a good fit for them for their wedding, maybe, you know, they have a good experience. They can refer someone else for a baby shower or for a corporate event, whatever. That totally makes a lot of sense. Exactly. I'm, I'm curious, as you've been in business, well, you've been in business for a couple of years as a venue now. Um, have you seen some things that maybe if you started over again, you would have done sooner or not done at all? Yes. <laughs> um catering probably wouldn't right off the bat i would have changed that i would have I, I probably couldn't have changed it though you don't know until you try it so if i wouldn't have worked with some caterers i wouldn't have known whether i like them or not and if i like their style of it's not food all food's great right but it's the steps of service change because some people are really new to the space um and they don't have the experience to know what good or bad service is yet so i probably say i would change that but probably can't because that was such a huge learning curve for me uh in that um i think the price point is hard i probably would have changed that sooner my number was really low just because i wanted to get people through the door um but i kind of feel like now looking back you know almost two years ago did i shoot myself in the foot because then i got a certain kind of diy bride who are great i'm not trying to knock that it's just um, it created more work than I think necessary in order to have a, a fantastic wedding experience. So those are the two things off the top of my head that I'm still like ruminating on and trying to figure out, even now working out the kinks on that to see what actually works best uh, for our venue space. I, I love these conversations with real venue owners and operators because it kind of, it's, it's that like, it's like you talking to yourself a couple of years ago saying, Hey, you might want to crank that price up or, Hey, you know, catering, like, I know you're going to have to go through a process, but catering, you know, you, you might want to look into like what will services, what are some of those service components that you learned from working with the catering companies that maybe you could pass on to someone else just getting started in business? Um, I, I think coming from the suit, the food side of things from the restaurant space, um, it's really hard to say, cause I don't want to make this sound offensive by any means, but when people are trying to get catering for weddings, they're looking at the price point. Um, so they're getting a, a value dinner. Um, but then the, they're just dropping off the food and there's nobody cleaning the tables. There's nobody taking the trash out. There's nobody making sure that the cups are refilled of your water and just giving that level of service. So that was the biggest thing for me. I'm learning that, yes, you can bring your own caterer in. Yes, there's an outside catering fee, but I'm making sure that those details are taken care of if your caterer doesn't know how to do that. And two, um, I've put in as a requirement that the staff has to stay for the whole event. They don't have to put the tables and chairs away, but they have to stay and make sure that it looks good again for the next wedding. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I can't tell you how many times I've had to learn that lesson because as a venue operator, we don't own any of the venues we manage, but we operate venues and it's the same thing. I mean, if staff doesn't stay at the end of the night, if it's like a taco truck or a food cart or some cool vendor, but they're just there for two or three hours and then they leave, you know, you as the owner or the operator or whoever, you're stuck there at the end of the night, you're busting tables, you're de cleaning decorations off, like you're doing that stuff because there's no one else there to do it. Exactly. So that was huge for me. And that was a tough pill to swallow for the first 10 weddings. <laughs> they made a lot of money and I did a lot of work. Yeah. And you probably learned a lot of those lessons that you now apply to the next 10 or the next 20, right? Correct. Talk to me about, about marketing. Cause as you're getting, as you're growing here, um, and you're building, you went from, well, tell me, tell me how many you said you did over the years. In so 2022, well, over the years, we've done plenty of weddings. We would probably average five a year, but little ones like but that was the cafe space. Um, the first year I did 15 
And then this year I'm on par to do 40. Wow. That's incredible growth, Jessica. That's awesome. Great. It's great. Scary. I can't believe I'm doing it. It's like, holy moly, but it's pretty exciting. <laughs> What are you doing to keep all of that information straight? Like, are you using a CRM system? Are you using like QuickBooks? Like what, what are you using in terms of like tools? Yep. So HoneyBook is the biggest for me. Um, that was the first one that I found. I tried a couple others, but this, that HoneyBook platform, uh, felt the easiest to use. Um, I probably have a ton more to learn. I'm not using it at its best yet for, uh, funneling and, uh, automations. I'm not quite there yet. I'm still a one man, a one, one gal show. Um, so I'm just doing it all myself, but I'm working on email automation better. Like when they finish their tour, then it automatically sends, you know, and all that stuff's happening. Um, so HoneyBook has been a huge help. Uh, we do QuickBooks. Um, that's helpful, but we already had an accounting program. So that piece of it was not so much of a learning. It was more the contract piece and the scheduling piece and making sure I didn't double book things. Um, and that's where HoneyBook has been super helpful. As far as contracts go, insurance, things like that. Was there someone that you, you worked with? Um, did you have previous contacts from, from business? Like how did you get those elements worked out? It was just, um, I just googled a lot and used my resources you know i have a lot of accounting friends from the being in the business and um property management uh resources so i really just took a lot of everything and tucked it in and then had a lawyer review it to make sure i wasn't doing it completely wrong um so it was really hodgepodge it was it is literally as grassroots and bootleg as you can think i just pulled as many hours of google together as possible to to come up with what I what I wanted the venue to look like and make it as easy as possible for a client to book with me. I I love how driven you are and how like passionate you are about this and I can tell that you're you're just like fully in it, right? Like you said, you're you're bootstrapping it, you're like getting it together. It's a hodgepodge, but you're driving for something, right? And I'm curious um what for you is some of the motivation Bind it and I'm and I'm curious, like push this conversation out two, three, five years. If we talked again, where where's your venue? Uh if we talked again in five I hopefully in the next five years, so minus two. So three years from now when we talk, um, I really want this to be not so much autopilot, but I want to have a full crew that each has a piece of the pie and they know exactly what to do, and I can um tour the couple i can get them started on their wedding day and then once that dinner served i can go home and know that my crew's got it under control um and really it be satisfying this very niche couple that's i call them my ll bean jeep couple i want them to be loving the outdoors they're super chill their first dance is like a reggae thing um and then they're going to come back year after year to have a beer with me on the porch so that's really like what i'm looking at in the next five years i want to keep it so tight i don't want it to be a um for lack of better words i don't want it to be like a corporate wedding of mcdonald's i don't want to do 190 billion weddings a year i'd like to have a solid let's say 35 or 40 that are renting for the weekend and they're they became part of the family kind of thing so um closer to a autopilot than i am now would probably be great too <laughs> i i love that it's interesting that you said you know you want to get to let's say you know, 40, 35, you said 30, 35, like in that range, 40. I mean, you're there right now in terms of amount of weddings that you've booked, but now it just sounds like you're streamlining operations, maybe hiring some people, some of that stuff. Yeah. I really don't have anybody. Like, it's just me. I have a small crew that I can call to come in and bartend and break down tables and chairs, but there's nobody sitting behind the computer that's connecting with the couples the way that I am. And I really would like to have a partner in crime in that, in that area where I could leave. I don't want to lose touch, but I would like to be able to walk away for a minute and know that somebody took my spot and is doing a better job than me. And I haven't found that person yet. I don't know if I've actually looked um, because it's still so new. Um, 
but that's kind of what I'd like to be is have a partner in crime in this somewhere down the line. Do you feel like as you've been in business, you've had to make adjustments because of the economy or because you're kind of local? Like if you started to feel any of that uh, yet, either, yeah, economically, people's budgets, anything like that? Um, I'm feeling that more, not so much. So when people come down to book the venue as the wedding venue, I'm not feeling that crunch of money. They're ready to spend, but I'm finding it in the smaller details, the bar, the tent rentals, the food, they're really trying to keep it tight. So they still want to have a big wedding, but they don't want to spend the money. So they're having to make that sacrifice. And that usually comes back to me on the venue space for some reason that they don't want to take that next step to get a full bar package. They just want to do the beer and wine and they only pay for 20 people instead of 50 people, you know? So those are some things I'm starting to see. And then because we don't just do weddings that I allow, you know, we do social events, baby showers, anniversary parties. Um, I am seeing it more there right now that people are they're it, trying to keep it tight, like really, really watch their money uh, when they're trying to plan a party. So they want to have a party from 2018 on a 2023 budget. Mm. What is that? As far as you can tell, what is that kind of all in budget that you've been seeing so far? For weddings? Yeah. Um, I think right now, so we do 120 people as our max. Um, that's what I have for tables and chairs. We could do more than that, but that's just, I feel like is a, a sweet spot for us. Um, so our average couple probably spends all in with me venue bar food they're probably at like 150 a person right now yeah. so i don't know i really don't know um like some of the bigger bigger venues around us they have minimums you know you have to have 100 people you have to use these things so and i know they're starting probably closer to 200 a person um so it's kind of where we are is, is that how you charge like on a per person basis? Or are you doing it fee or are you just expressing it that way? Or is that I'm expressing it that way? So I do everything is the best way to explain it is that we are all inclusive, but you decide the package you want to choose. So our venue space, you get an all day rental It includes tables and chairs set up and breakdown. And then, um, here are our bar packages. You can choose whatever one you want. There's no minimums. Here's our food packages. You can choose this or go outside. Um, so I just really break it down based on their budgets and their needs and wants. Got it. Got it. So that's why you're able to say 150 per person. You don't necessarily have a minimum as long as it's, you know, well, you don't have a minimum. It sounds like even if it's a smaller event, as long because they're, they are booking the venue space and that's correct. Kind of cool. yeah. Yeah, and that's how I started. Like, this is how much the venue costs. Whether we're open or closed, this property costs this much money. So if you want to use it, this is how much it costs. And everything else is gravy on top of the mashed potatoes at that point. So, like, this weekend, Friday, I have a wedding for 10 people. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. And they're about, they're at, like, 200 a person. Because they were, like, we're splurging. We're going top of the line, you know? So. Got it. But they're able to do that because they only have 10 people. 10 people, right. So that makes sense. That's a really cool, cool model of doing it. I, I'm curious as we as we wrap up today, I'm going to ask you the two questions that we usually ask everyone, which is your favorite part and your least favorite part of venue ownership. So I wanted to kind of prep you for that, right? Um, but overall, do you? What are some of the challenges? Kind of like the biggest challenges. Your would it be fair to say three years into venue ownership? Yeah. Ooh, that, what at the three year mark, what are some of your biggest challenges that you're facing right now? Um, on a personal level, it's time management. Uh, just, you know, I have a, a young family. I have a husband that works a full time job. So just trying to navigate all of that. Um, so that's one challenge. Two, I would say marketing is difficult. It's not hard. I enjoy doing it, but it's like what is working and what's not working. It's hard to gauge in this era. Like, where we are, there's so much information out there. You don't know what is grabbing people. Uh, at least I don't right now. Hopefully I'll figure that out. Um, and then the economy, it's so uns there's so much uncertainty. And then when I do Monday morning quarterbacking with myself or with my parents, you know, I'll bring this up and say the economy, but at the end of the day, 
people are always going to celebrate. They're going to celebrate a wedding and they're going to celebrate at a funeral and they're going to pay for it because those are important milestones in their life. So I say it's a challenge, but we always make it through. So <laughs> yeah, no. And unless, unless it was like a challenge that you're not going to overcome, but just kind of what's on the, what's on the docket for you as far as things that you're looking at, you know, solving, um, for, for your business that, that makes total sense. Uh, when it comes to marketing, are you using online directories and, you know, there's, there's so many different platforms out there. Are you using those, uh, you know, marketing channels or are you going, you know, what, what else are you using? Um, so social media, 100% Instagram. I mean, that is the driving for, um, that's my marketing. Like that's what I market on. Um, Google AdWords. We use that for SEO keywords. I just started blogging so I can start to do that. Um, I did do a paid advertisement in a local magazine and I saw nothing from that. So I don't know if I'll do that again, unfortunately, because it was a huge thing. It was, we won an award actually the first year for best water for a venue in Baltimore. <laughs> it was so crazy. Um, so I put an ad in, which I'm grateful for, but I put a little barcode in to see if I would get any fee like anything from it. I don't think anybody clicked on it. So I don't know if that worked or not because I haven't any anybody say they got that. Um, they got information from there. Um, but that's mostly it. Again, it's just word of mouth, lots of Google reviews and sharing them. Um, and just like I said earlier, grassroots bootstrapping <laughs> door yeah. to door. That's just what it feels like. It's, it's interesting because with the, um, with the kind of retooling of your local reputation that you have going on and the way that you're pulling these people from out, out of town inside, it's, it does seem tough to kind of, you know, have a sort of like any sort of local presence, whether it's an, an ad in a magazine or any sort of like local guide like that, because still the area doesn't, they think of you as that restaurant. Oh, that's that place on the right. So it, it is almost, it almost sounds like your efforts would be, taken better if you're focusing on stuff outside of the immediate area who may not know you because they didn't have that reputation with you before exactly every client that has booked in the past two years uh one knew about us <laughs> wow all well, 50 years yep they literally did a google search and they typed in affordable waterfront venues and we popped up <laughs> wow that's awesome yeah. that's really cool because once you start getting the local community activated and like understanding you that you know that you are a venue now that's just even more uh fodder to the the bonfire that you're growing i love it yeah it's like being a brand new business in your backyard <laughs> that's a good analogy i like that i like that <laughs> well moving on to the last two questions that we ask your favorite your least favorite part i'd love to know your least favorite part of just venue ownership overall um and then we'll finish up with your your most favorite I hate setting up tables and chairs. <laughs> okay. I'm over it. I love not to do that ever again. That's my least favorite part of the wedding part on the physical side. Um, and on the like well, mental side. Oh, what? Well, I just wanted to quickly add something. How are you finding people to do that? If you're not doing that, you said you had a little team of folks who, you know, do bartending and some other things. Um, so that's from the cafe staff. They're just kind of filtered in. Um, they're all teachers. So they always come back every season and they're all starting to bring their friend, teacher friends with them. So I just keep collecting little teacher friends and I send out a mass message each month and say, here are dates and who wants to do what? And then sometimes I get them and sometimes I go, don't. And then the one girl, um, she brings her 17 year old brother to set the tables and chairs up. <laughs> More 17 year old brothers. <laughs> Bring all the 17 year old brothers. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Very cool. Okay. So you said on the mental side, I interrupted. Uh, on the mental side, I, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, I think, is the hardest part. It's just getting up every day. There's nobody that's going to do it for me. And I have to go. Like, I have to. There's nobody that's going to save me. And there's nobody's going to book a wedding but me. Um, so that's a blessing and a curse. Um, I think that would be one of the, not my least favorite, but one of the biggest challenges. Definitely. Definitely. That makes sense. All right. What is your most favorite part? My most favorite part. 
Uh, it's two. It's connecting with a couple. I've made friends with all of them or 90%. I just got um, my very first couple that booked just sent me a message with their baby that they just had. So I'm still connecting with them after the fact. Um, and then my favorite, favorite, favorite part is when the, the, the bride is standing with her dad before she walks down the aisle. I'm the last person to touch her and congratulate her. And that's a moment that I get to have with every couple right there on the spot. So every time I take the last picture of them on my cell phone, I know that sounds so getting a little teary here. Um, but that's like a connection piece that I have with that bride that I can send her afterwards. Like, here's this picture of you and your dad or whoever walked you down. And we, we just have that moment together that I wouldn't have running a restaurant, <laughs> you know? So those, that's my favorite part is just watching that happen and seeing all of the magic come together uh, after all of our hard work and planning. Jessica, I love that. That's, that's so neat. The way that you're connecting with those couples and sending them that after like, that's that piece that reactivates the relationship and kind of like keeps you top of mind. Honestly. I mean, I know it, it has such a huge component, but it also has a wonderful marketing component because you did something so special for them that, that they're able to like, take care. And even when they receive that, just kind of get a flashback to that moment that was so special. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica, for coming on today. You know, for anybody who's listening on the podcast side and, and not watching on YouTube, obviously we have the links and things like that. But for anyone who's listening, can you um, just shout out your Instagram handle and your website for anyone who wants to connect with you? Sure. So on Instagram, we are Island View Waterfront Venue. Um, and that's in Essex, Maryland. And then our website is islandviewwaterfrontevents.net. Islandviewwaterfrontevents.net. Beautiful. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been a real pleasure to connect with you and hear more about your venue. And I'm excited to watch you grow. I I I believe it. You're gonna you're gonna have a team working for you in no time and no no more tables and chairs. <laughs> no more tables and chairs. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Jessica, talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs>